welcome back everyone. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this petticoat. Whoosh! I've put a gather trim on here and I've put another little trim with a little bit like diamante looking things on top. I've also bound the edges of the lowest part of the petticoat. This little petticoat is put in before the skirt goes on and a long time to make but I think it's well worth it so let's get started with making this beautiful petticoat um, I'm actually going to do it with different trimmings you have one set of the fabric underneath it and the other one is going to be fed through the gap and then what's through that gap will be pushed in at intervals like that and will be gathered and so it sews it together at the same time as it gathers it which is excellent so we've got lots and lots of knitting um, i got 10 meters or i cut 10 meters of this stuff and then i cut it all into the same width and i'll tell you in a minute what that width is um, i put on a trim as well and I'm going to just do a short bit for you so you can see how all of this works. That's just a piece of fabric which I'm going to gather like this and insert and then trim instead of my bling bling for the flower girl. We're going to do it with this. So how do I work out how long everything has to be? You want to fold over your hem so that you don't make it too long. And then also you want to look at where the opening is. You start your netting underneath the opening. Yourself in your tape measure and measure down. So this is going to be sewn on right there. So I've got probably 29. I don't want this to be as long as the dress because I don't want it to peep out. So if it's 31, say, okay, so I want to go just over my hem. In my case, that's 29 and a half. Um, it's much easier if you know 10, 10, 10, and you can cut it all the same. You don't get confused. So cut yourself lots and lots of this. The first layer is going to be the one, let's fold this over, that goes flat in. There is not going to be any gather on this. So I need this obviously twice because it's the back and I have two pieces. So I do that. And then I need the whole lot again because I've got a front two. I'm going to take that to here. And then just to be safe, I cut it a little bit further than that. So now I've got my piece ready here and I know that is my top layer. All the other layers will automatically come when I put this together. Next we're going to put this beauty on and in order to do that you need to take off your presser foot and also the attachment that holds the presser foot so you need to undo the screw and then attach the ruffler foot and that little arm goes over your screw on the right hand side there and then you just have to put the screw in the main arm again to attach it and then we can get started so the plain straight bit goes underneath and the first bit that we're going to gather is going on the top and basically all you have to do is make sure that they are on top of each other and line up and when your piece is finished that you are ruffling, you just attach the next piece straight off. It doesn't need to be sewn together. You just lay that over the top. Then for the next layer, you just turn it with the right side facing up and then the next piece of netting goes in. And you just do this from layer to layer. So if you're doing like a really, really long one, you just keep going and you'll end up with a huge petticoat, which is just the kind of sort of increase of gather to make it stand really well and that would be the easy option of creating a petticoat so here i've got my two layers on so you basically just put one on and then the next one on and hey presto you're almost done but on my bridal one of course i did it slightly different so what you do is again you put the straight bit of netting on there and then you gather the lace first and with that done 
you put that underneath again and now we're going to gather the netting over the top of that so I'm not really sure it needs it but there you go um, this is how you do it if you want to do it exactly like I did make sure that the sides line up and here I've decided it's gathering way too much so you can adjust the density with that little screw it's great this one actually 14.99 at Joann's you can't really quibble with that it's actually working better than the one from Frapp which was really expensive and then you can put over the top um, a bit of bling or a bit of ribbon anyway whatever you put on you need to zigzag over the top at this point and then I would zigzag the same stuff over the top here and that way you get such a beautiful beautiful finish and I'm using the elastic zigzag stitch but really anywhere do and you can then place your ribbon or whatever it is that you've chosen over the top it's a lot of work on the edge we are going to use some binding and you can either use a pre-prepared binding or make your own and again this one would also work very well we're just going to stitch close to the edge and the tool is right in there so it's really easy actually and because we've done all the lot here in pink I'm carrying on with the pink theme now and I'm putting my tool or netting right into the groove here and then going over it so what you want to do is stay close to the edge you don't want to stitch somewhere in the middle there I always see that or used to see that when I still taught the courses People would be like stitching there, it's not nice. It's close to the edge. If it's pre-creased, it'll be just the same underneath it. And some even are like that, so one stands over the other a little bit. So you want to always like have the shorter side facing up while you're doing it. And here we go, petticoat finished. Well, sample petticoat finished, you can see how much you're going to gain you don't need to gather your netting massively you get a beautiful finish here and I mean that is almost too nice to go under anything don't you agree so now we can swap back to the bridal petticoat finally we're going to put the petticoat on make sure that the seam is facing up and make sure it's not too long so that it can peep out it needs to be just underneath that gap we've left in the underskirt and then we're going to pin this on all the way around so measure the distance to the top and then at the same distance pin it in and if that means reducing your um, first part of the petticoat which goes on flat then so be it Then at the centre back we're going to put the right sides together and just sew them and then overlock that seam. Pull away your overlocking at the bottom so that it can't open up. Cut the top part and that's it. Now all we have to do is put it back on the ironing board and pin that last little bit and we're actually done. We can go over to the sewing machine and just bring this baby home. <laughs> This is a lot of work, but I think it looks really nice and um, it's well worth it. So we're using a bob standard stitch and then we're taking out the pins as we go and we're working our way all the way around. Never ever try to put the petticoat in once the dress is already sewn. That is a lot of work and it's almost impossible to get it straight because you're dealing with so much fabric at the time and um, you can't really do it this is brilliant work your way all the way around and now we're ready to put that beautiful petticoat into our flower garden 
don't forget you've got videos for the Kümmerbund and the completed dress and the video for the jacket is also coming up soon so there's a whole lot of flower girl stuff to do thank you for watching and see you next time